From an 80% unemployment rate to an average life expectancy of 50 years old, the Oglala Sioux of Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota face some of the most harrowing statistics in the United States. But behind these numbers lurks a silent enemy that's decimating families and threatening the Oglala way of life, alcohol. For the vast majority of the reservation's 125-year history, alcohol has been banned. Yet despite this ban, Pine Ridge's alcoholism rate is estimated to be as high as 80%. The alcohol is infiltrating the tribe from a border town just two miles away. Only about 12 people live here in White Clay, Nebraska. But in 2012, the four stores located right next to Pine Ridge sold over 160,000 cases of beer. And that beer is generating enormous profits for both store owners and the state of Nebraska. There's uh, anywhere from three to five million dollars being made every year, which leaves Indian country. None of White Clay's store owners would talk to us on camera, but it's clear that this eye-popping revenue in an economically distressed area is why tribe members voted this past August to finally allow alcohol on the reservation. But the decision to legalize only passed by a 4% margin and continues to generate deeply divided opinions among the people of Pine Ridge. A lot of people drink. They're going to find it somewhere, even though they don't legalize it. Don't make alcohol legal on our reservation, because we have enough problems when it's not legal. If we stop feeding on the government and start being more self-sufficient amongst ourselves, hey, by legalizing alcohol, hey, that's going to say that's one more step to growing up. Although the referendum was passed by a majority vote five months ago, Pine Ridge's tribal government, a council consisting of 19 representatives, has final say on if and how the new law is implemented. Robin Tapio, a representative from the village of Pine Ridge and an advocate of alcohol legalization, believes this potential revenue is the only way to turn the tide when it comes to preventative health. I don't ever see the federal government coming up with um, the resources to help us build treatment centers, to help us build a detox, to help us build a homeless shelter. Another council member, Bernie Shot with Arrow, who opposes the referendum, worries that more alcohol on the reservation will lead to more crime. We're hurting the law enforcement, so if it does get legalized, it's just going to be, it's going to be worse. Not to mention the difficulties police officers already have in responding to alcohol-related crime. Uh, we're down to about 30 officers, and if it, like I probably someone said one time, this reservation is the size of Rhode Island, so you figure you know, that's not enough. I mean, there's like 40,000 people here. Both Tapio and Shot with Arrows concerns are well justified, considering that 220 million dollars was slashed just last year from the Indian Health Service, a nearly 5% cut due to the sequester. The decrease in money is actually illegal and stands in violation of long-standing treaties between the U.S. government and Native American communities. But government cutbacks and broken promises aren't the only hurdles facing the Lakota Nation. The inner corruption within the council itself is of concern when it comes to the allocation of funds. If this were to pass, we would like the alcohol revenues to be set in a separate account not come into the tribe's general, because the tribe has something called the general fund. And the general fund is pretty much money that's spent where there's, you can't really tag it or track it. You know what I mean? They call it the black hole. Only time will tell if legalization is the right course of action for a community devastated by alcoholism. But more importantly is whether the tribal council will spend these potential funds in a way that can build a sustainable future for generations to come.